Good afternoon, everybody. The topic from semester two, botany honors, and paper three, sister three, mycology and plant pathology. That is Buxinia graminis. Is Buxinia graminis is one of the uh, plant pathogen and causes a uh, heavy loss in the wheat, which is one of the staple food of an Asian country. The genus includes about three thousand species worldwide, but India only it reports one hundred and forty-seven genus. It causes a rust disease or the black stem rust of wheat. The systematic positions, it belongs to the kingdom fungi, division Eumycota, subdivision Basidiomycotina, class Tiliomycetes, order Eurydinus, family Paxinaceae, genus Paxinia, and species Graminus. There are other species that are also there, but this specific species Graminus, it infects the wheat plant. And uh, uh, this is an obligate parasite. So it requires a specific host that is a, a wheat uh, plant and uh, uh, other secondary host for its uh, completion of life cycle. It is heterogeneous parasites. It requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle. The first host or the primary host is a wheat, and the secondary host is the Berberis or the Mahone plant which is generally found in the hills. So the infection symptoms it shows like this in on the wheat plant. So if we come to the life cycle of the pathogen Paxinia graminis, it shows or it completes life cycle uh, in the two hosts as we have said. And in the first host or in the primary host, it forms different types of the spores. The spores are uridum spores, N plus N, and it is produced in a specific structure that is known as uridosporangium and teleutosporus N plus N. It is produced specialized structures, teleutosporangium. And the third spore is a basidiospores, is the N type or it's a haploid type. And each basidiospores, uri, sorry, uridospores and teleutospores are dicaryotic cells, but teleutospores are diceled dicaryotic cells. And they obtain their nourishment from the posterior. If we see the uridinal stage of the pathogen, the hyphae of the pathogen after infection on the primary host, it gets aggregated just below the epidermal layer of the cells and they form a specialized structure which is known as uridosporangium. Out of this uridosporangium, the first kind of the spores is produced which is known as uridosporangium. Now the uridosporangium produce uridospores. Now this uridospores are diceled. It's more or less uh, oval shaped structures and uh, after maturity it adjusts pressure on the epidermis finally ruptured in the form of slits through which the rusty colored uridospores are seen. Now again this uridospores they are capable of infecting the same host or the host that is present nearby so that means it produces or it causes several infections at a time also but during the changes in the environmental conditions you will see this are the symptoms we see during the infection of urodosporangium okay so, so that is called the rusty appearance and uh, here it's rightly been called as the rust disease of urosporan uh, of the wit is also been called here and after that if you see the structures it is more or less a oval here and there is a stalk it is it's a um, well, we have uh, structures and binucleated structures and rusty in color and after the urospores the another type of the spore it is the telial spore or teletospore stage. Late in the growing season, the urodospores are metamorphosed into another kind of the spore that is known as teletospores in the same urodosora or urodosporangium. And these teletospores are also dicell type, are also N plus N, dicaryotic, but having the dicelled. So this is more or less a black in color. So you can see this is um, the uh, more or less a uh, diceled and uh, dicaryotic um, high uh, structure is there it looked like this and during the infection of this teletospores the symptoms on the primary host or the wheat it looked like this is a blackish in appearance why because the outermost layer of this 
Keratose force is much more thicker and it is opaque in order to, you know, withstand a very heavy undesiccated and uh, very structure. So that's why it looks uh, black in color. So it is also been rightly called here as a black stem rust of wheat. And uh, it looks like this. It's a dark brown with the black color. It's a stalked and the spindle shaped structure. And this is a diceled one cell, two cell plus n plus n cells, like your uh, diceles. And it is thick and smooth type. And after this, after the maturations of this teletospores, uh, they will fall on the spore or sometimes either still attached on the primary host, uh, this teletospore germinates to form another third type of the spores known as the basidiospores. Now, how the basidiospores is formed? The tip of each hyphase wells and form a single binucleated oval erosphores formed in a group, erodinium or neurodosaurus. They exert pressure on the epidermis, finally ruptured in the form of slates through which rusty colored erodospores are been seen. After this, the teletospores, each teletospore act as a basidium and that basidium is known as hypobasidium and the hypobasidium will convert into the apibasidium and after apibasidium, all the Cells, which is a dicell, is there n plus n cells undergo uh, in, uh, deployed uh, diploidization, and after that, it forms the it undergo the meiotic cell divisions, and as a result, after meiosis, they'll form a haploid cells. That is a four haploid cells, and here, then the segregation of the strains will be formed, and half will uh, will form the plus strains, and half will obviously form the minus strains. So fifty percent will form the half strain um, plus strain, and fifty uh, percent will form the minus strength and after that each uh, basidium pragmo basidium will form the small haploid basidiospores now after the basidiospores is been formed now this basidiospores will continue its life cycle in the secondary host now this basidiospores are haploid they may be of the plus strains or minus strains and after um, uh, liberations or disseminated from the teletospores, they will uh, germinate on the upper epidermis of the Burberry leaf and produce the another type of the spores which is known as pycneospores or pic within the pycneospore engine. So the secondary or the continuations of the secondary host uh, will be there. So that will be dealt in the second part of the video. Thank you.